In this video, we're looking at all the ways that you can stabilize a shot in DaVinci Resolve. We'll go from the simplest ways to the ways that you might need if you want to do something really specific. It's going to be a lot of fun and we even have some demo footage for you to download. Just click the link in the description and this will take you to our Media Vault, where you can get all kinds of practice footage to help you make visual effects and motion graphics in Resolve. Today, we're going to be working with the wholesome footage. So if you sign up, you'll have instant access to download that. Once you have it downloaded, just throw the footage into Resolve, put it in a new timeline, and it'll look something like this. Now I do have this color managed. All I have to do is go to my project settings here under color management, set everything to look like this, select all our footage, right click, go to input color space, Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5. That should make everything look nice. And let's get going. So this wholesome footage was shot handheld, and so it's a little bit shaky. And let's smooth it out a little bit, huh? The very first easiest thing to do is in the edit page, select the clip that you want to stabilize and go up to your inspector. And about halfway down, you'll find this little bit called stabilization. This is the absolute easiest. All you have to do is hit stabilized, boop, like that. And it will do a pretty good job of stabilizing your footage. So that's after, and this is before. A little bit shaky. Isn't that great? So it takes all those little micro shakes out of there and it does a great job. I, I, you know, it's just really hard to be upset about that. So let's try it on this clip here. Stabilize, boop. And yeah, it looks pretty nice. Looks pretty nice. This one looks pretty great. Stabilization by default takes the little movements out of your footage. And so we have all these little kind of tiny movements. When we turn on stabilization, it takes those out but there is still just a little bit of movement. Looks good, but let's say you want it locked down completely still. You just check camera lock and hit stabilize again. And what that will do is make this look like a lockdown shot. And man, it does, it does such a good job. And depending on your camera settings and how much motion there is, how shaky it is, what your shutter speed is, this might look just indistinguishable, might, might just look beautiful. And I mean, this works pretty darn well. Now, if you have a lot of motion, it's not going to be able to take out that motion blur. It's still gonna kind of like fuzz every once in a while. So for instance, this clip, if we camera lock and stabilize it, one thing it's gonna do is zoom it in a lot because it doesn't want to cut off the edges. The other thing is you can notice, especially in these wires, they kind of blur every once in a while. See how they kind of blur back and forth? That's because of the motion blur. We can stabilize that image, but the motion blur is still going to be there. And so don't just go shoot everything handheld thinking that you can stabilize it perfectly. It's, it's not really the case. Where stabilizing works is when there's a little bit of jitter and you just want to take it out and make it look a little bit smoother. That's, that's kind of its happy place here. So for instance, this clip, we have that little, that little motion right there. You can take this, stabilize, and it'll take that motion out. Now, you'll notice something sometimes when you stabilize a clip, especially one where you have a big subject and then you have the background kind of far away from them, is sometimes when it stabilizes it, it'll sort of warp the background and it'll look kind of jello-y back there. The reason for that is just because of the perspective and kind of how it's changing. Especially if you hit camera lock, this is gonna be really apparent. We have this really squeezing the background and looking strange. And so in this case, what we might want to do is change the mode. So this mode is set to perspective by default. And I always recommend just trying that first because it's probably going to look good. But if it doesn't, you can switch it to either similarity or translation. Similarity basically does the same thing as perspective. It just tries not to warp the background so much. So when we hit stabilize, boop, like this, and play this back, we're going to get just a little bit nicer background. We still get a little bit. Sometimes you just can't avoid that. The other thing we can do is try just translation. And what that will do is instead of actually warping the image at all, it's just going to move it up and down and left and right. And that's gonna give us a little bit more natural looking background that might be a little bit less distracting. And again, depending on how much your camera's moving, how close the foreground is versus the background, you're gonna have kind of mixed results with this. Now, something to pay attention to is the smooth and strength sliders. If I select this and push the smooth up a little bit, what that's going to do is do more correction to the actual movement. It's going to try and keep it more steady in the frame as I get closer to one. And so as I do this all the way to one, it's going to be almost to camera lock. Very, very smooth. 
Now the strength is how much of kind of the little movements it takes out. So at zero, it's not going to do a whole lot, but at one, it takes out more of those movements. Normally I could just run this by default. And especially for this kind of clip, I'll probably do like translation, stabilize that. And now we have a pretty good result here that feels a lot better than we had with that kind of moving around a lot. Again, this works best for shots that are just a little bit shaky. I mean, if you have something that's just like Bigfoot footage, <laughs> I mean, you can stabilize it, but it's not going to look like you didn't have a shaky camera. So best thing to do is just to open this up and play around with it. Turn this one to the translation and camera lock and stabilize it. Now we have just this rooster. We have that camera somewhat locked down. We might just go to similarity and see how that works. Yeah, and because of the motion blur, we're gonna have a little bit of warping to the, of the background, but it's pretty good, it's pretty good. If we don't have our camera lock on, that might be a little bit better. I think it's nice to have a little bit of movement. If you're gonna stabilize it, I would keep a little bit of movement unless you really need it to be locked down for a certain reason. But I think that looks a lot more natural, looks really nice. You can't tell that you stabilized it, right? But when you take the stabilization off, you definitely notice the little jiggles. So it's more for like removing the little jiggles. So you can do a lot of stabilization in the edit page, but let's say that we want to really focus on a certain subject. Like for instance, when she looks at the camera, I want to completely lock on her face. We might be able to get this to work in the edit page, but a way to lock on directly to her face is we can go into the fusion page just by clicking into fusion and I can track her face specifically. So let's just bring up a planar tracker and I'll just Go around her face like this, set. And for the motion type, instead of perspective here, I'll switch this to translation. That means we're just tracking up, down, and left and right instead of trying to track it kind of in 3D space. And then we'll track this forward and track it backward. And now we can take this planar tracker and inside of the planar tracker under operation mode, we can switch this to steady. And what that'll do is lock her head in place. So it will always be here in the middle and we kind of lock down uh, to her head. So we have a different result than we had on the edit page, and it's a little bit more manual, right? In fact, let's just focus on when she looks at the camera here. Let's take this from frame 58 or so, just so we can have something that's constant here. And so this kind of locks onto her face, like her eyes pretty much stay in the same place and the edges go all willy-nilly crazy. Now, if we want a slightly more advanced version of this, we can go to Operation Mode Stabilize, and this is gonna do a similar thing. We'll compute the stabilization like this. It's gonna do a similar thing, but it's gonna give us a little bit more adjustments. If we had tracked the rotation and scale, we can uncheck those. We can even uncheck the X or the Y. I'll hit Compute again. And so now we're just tracking this on the X. We're letting it go up and down, but we're not moving it left and right. And of course we could do the opposite of that. Boop. We're tracking it up and down, but she can move left and right. And depending on what you're doing, why you'd want to stabilize that, that might be better or worse for you. So it takes a lot of the micro jitters, at least up and down off of this. And so this can be really useful, especially if you're doing visual effects, but if you just want a really specific kind of stabilization, you can jump into the fusion page and use the planar tracker real quick to track whatever you want to stabilize. So we could do something different. Let's stabilize to this popsicle here. And we'll just do that with translation, track this back and forth. Then we'll hit steady. And now we're tracking to this popsicle. <laughs> uh, that's pretty fun. Now, if you don't want those edges on this, you can do a transform node after the planar tracker and size it and position it however you want, kind of manually like this just to make sure that you kind of crop in there in a way that's appropriate. So yeah, a little bit more manual, but you have a lot more control here in the Fusion page, and you can do a lot of stabilization here in the Edit page. So again here, let's just do Perspective, Stabilize, like this, and see how that works. And that looks pretty nice. Looks pretty good. You can even select all of the footage all at once and stabilize. And you can apply that stabilization to all the clips. 
And again, some of them might be better to do with a certain kind of stabilization, either similarity or perspective or camera lock or not camera lock. Really depends on what you want to do. But this is a super useful tool in DaVinci Resolve. And if you want to try this out yourself and get some of that wholesome footage ungraded so you can practice visual effects and edits and color grading and all that stuff, that's where it is. Thanks for watching. A lot. Thanks for watching a lot.